I just wrote a piece for um, this, well, I was interviewed for this magazine called Quilt Folk. And in, 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 in that magazine, Real, Real Quilt? Real quilt. I quilt love folk. quilt. I love and, quilt art. This is amazing. See, he's trying to pit me for no, no, free no, no, quilt. No, 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 Because he knows I would do that for so him. What, what, what? You, you have I'm an a access? No. You're a quilter? So, yeah. And so it was very Whoa. difficult. That, that was one of the, the hardest <laughs> confessions for me to make was to call myself an artist. And I, I'm the granddaughter of a master quilter um, in the area of G's Bend. Uh, my nana wow. was... Um, a fabulous quilter, and to know, and of course, the quilters of her generation were discovered, right, as great artists, um, when all they were trying to do was to create sanctuaries for themselves, to make whole cloth out of scraps, uh, to bring beauty into share crop shotgun houses, and to give warmth to their children. And my grandmother had 14 children, 12 who were girls. My mother was the oldest of all of them. Um, they're all living. And 35 grandchildren and even more great-grands. And they all hated quilting. <laughs> because it reminded them of poverty. Yeah. It reminded them of the way in which she would steal away to do that. You know, 14 kids who are, are used to having her always at their beck and call. And it was a thing that separated her, much in the same way women use kitchens as secret sororities when they didn't have college educations. Um, and it was only until I became a professor and got a Wabash grant for the artists um, as theologian for mid-career faculty, um, where we were told to find an art that we were interested in or were curious about. So we might be able to empathize with our students who were entering into discourses uh, that they never knew, like the, the gentleman back there said, you know, I'm in this room full of scholars and I don't do this, I'm just trying to live. Right? So we might be able to identify with our students and we might be able to refine our expertise by learning something new. So I stitch in the ditch with machines in the way my grandmother did it by hand and it has ignited for me a sense of cultural memory that I now possess even though she is gone. And my grandmother died of um, co um, complications with Alzheimer's. And when she, passed, when, when she was in her latter stages of Alzheimer's, she didn't know her children's names. Uh, she forgot, you know, even some bodily functions, obviously. But two things she recalled. She recognized her quilts. And she would say that there's a baby somewhere that wants me to teach her how to make these. Um, so art, and I think it does go to your question of what the work of a Christian social ethicist might be. Art is about that utopia. It's, it's about that new world making. It's about taking refuse and, and making something divine. Using utility for the purpose of making stained glass where there aren't even windows, right? I realized that what upset my aunts and uncles and my cousins about my Nana's quilting was art allowed her to create a sanctuary for herself when she was otherwise laid open to their desires. So there's a way in which for me, the work of ethics is much like art. It cannot start with a divine will deontology that says, you know, deal with it as it is. And that whatever your experience is, how God ordained it. No, I think it's more of King's rational, intuitional deontology that says we can look at this thing that says it's this, and make something new out of it.
right? For we have to reformat that, that, that Platonic and Aristotelian notions of forms to function for us in ways that might otherwise never have been imagined. And that is to tap on the God within us. That is to realize that God is not some removed entity, but Emmanuel, God with us, an Imago Dei, God through us. And art is a wonderful spiritual practice for us as theologians because that's what we're doing in our literary and biblical imagination as we dare hand over to people the word of God morning by morning and Sunday by Sunday, right? Toni Morrison puts it this way. She said, it is, a, it is a sin and a travesty. This is her book, Sula. To have, a, for a woman to exist with no art form. Because when people do not have art, they become dangerous. In other words, if we're not constructing something, we're always destroying something. He wants a quilt. Yeah, quilt.